This long title sounds intimidating, but I think you'll find that this is in fact a fairly easy thing to do. So what's a monomial? It just means one term. So one term equations. What does that mean? One term. Well, a term is something like this. 5x or 5xy or 5xyz. Well, what does two terms look like? Two terms would be something like 5x squared plus 5x. Terms are typically separated by plus or minus signs right here. Notice here, <clears throat> and in this case, and this one, we have one lump of stuff. That's one term. What do these terms mean? 5x means 5 times x. In algebra, numbers and letters next to each other mean multiply. What about 5xy? This means 5 times x times y. So numbers and letters, all this, this all means multiplication. Same thing here. This means 5 times x times y times z. We call that one term in math. And in fact, you'll find this is quite easy to deal with. Let's say we had a term like 4x. Well, what if we had 4x plus 2x? These are two monomials, one here and one there. Together, it's a binomial, but individually, they're monomials. OK, so anyway, we're adding these two terms. This is one term. This is the other. What do we do? Well, this is 6x. How did I get that? The x's are untouched, and we add the two numbers here that are called coefficients. Why? Well, 4x literally means that there are 1, 2, 3, 4 x's that are existing. I picture them in a bag or a box. We're adding them to another basket with exactly two x's. So when we add these x's together, here we have 4 x's, here we have 2, now we have 6 x's. Now, nothing changes here. If we had 10xy plus 3xy, this is going to be, can you guess, 13xy. Why 13? Well, here we have 10xy's. One little xy, another, 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 and another. And more and more until we have 10. And then we have, in this bucket, three groups of xy's. Think of the xy not as two separate variables. These letters are called variables, but one whole package. So here we have three xy's, here we have 10 xy's, now we have 13 of them. Even as something as complicated as this, 14 a, b, c, d. Well, what if we took 14 a, b, c, d plus <coughs> 3 a, b, c, d? It seems complicated, but really, we have one bucket full of 14 a, B, C, Ds. I'm not going to draw them all out, but I just want to give you the idea. We have 14 of them in here. And then we're adding another bucket with three A, B, C, Ds. Oops, A, B, C, D. And now, 14 plus 3 is 17 A, B, C, D. So adding, when you're adding these monomials, you're just adding the numbers, the coefficients that are next to the variables. Now, this can be a little confusing if we have, sometimes when we see x or negative x, students wonder, well, what number do I use? x, you would use the number 1, because this means 1 times x. Negative x means negative 1 times x, so the number is just negative 1. Typically, 1 and negative 1 are not written with multiplication, because the number 1 doesn't change the number or variable next to it. So we could have something like this. 5x plus x. Well, since x is 1x, so you have 1x plus 5x, now we have 6 of them. If we had 5x plus negative x, well, we have 5x is here and a negative x here. Now our bucket analogy has a little bit of trouble. How do you have a negative x in a bucket? Well, this is just going back to our number line theory and stuff we were using before. 
5x plus negative x is 4x because we're taking 1x away from the 5 that we have. And we can use our rules of <coughs> integers. If we have 5x minus x, well, take 1x from 5x, that's 4x. And sometimes you might see something a little bit more confusing, like 5x minus negative x. Well, remember that subtracting a negative is adding a positive. So this is 6x. Other examples could be negative 2x minus x. Well, here we have negative 2. Remember on the number line, if we're standing at negative 2, right here, we take 1x away. Remember that 1 is not written? We hop down 1 to negative 3. So this would be negative 3x.